Hi, my name is Tim Lemire, and I'm a writer. Whenever I think about what good dialogue is, in either the movies or in stories that I read, I sometimes fall into the trap of thinking that good dialogue means snappy or clever exchanges, comic repartee, or impassioned speeches. Good dialogue can be those things, of course, but I remind myself that dialogue can also be restrained and subtle, implying more than it reveals. In this video, I'd like to use a scene from one of my favorite movies to demonstrate this point. This is What I Saw, When I Saw, Blade Runner. In the movie Blade Runner, the way to establish, demonstrably and with certainty, that an individual is a replicant, other than cutting that person open, is the administration of the Voight-Kampff test. Of the five replicants, however, that Deckard is assigned to retire, Roy, Leon, Pris, Zora, and Rachel, he has the opportunity to administer the test only to one, Rachel. And yet, when Rachel and Deckard first meet, it is she who asks the first question, Do you like our owl? Note that Rachel doesn't ask Deckard if he's impressed with the owl, that is, with Tyrell's ability to build an artificial animal indistinguishable from the biological original. Rachel also does not ask, what do you think of our owl? No, Rachel asks Deckard if he likes the owl, even though Deckard shows no sign of liking it, such as smiling at it or even chuckling at how realistic it appears. Implicit in Rachel's question is an interest in seeing if Deckard has an emotional response to an animal. This could very well have been a question in the Voight-Kampff test, since an emotional response to animals appears to be key in gauging the subject's empathy. Remember that Leon almost panics at the question about a tortoise, and the final question to Rachel in her Voight-Kampff test, a question she does not answer, has to do with a feast of boiled dog. Deckert, for his part, doesn't answer Rachel's question about the owl. It's artificial, he asks. Deckert later puts the same question to Zora in reference to her snake. Of course it is, Rachel replies. So is Rachel using the owl to make small talk? Or is she up to something else? Rachel clearly knows what Deckard does for a living. After exchanged introductions, she puts Deckard on the spot with a personal question. Have you ever retired a human by mistake? It's natural to assume that what Rachel means is, have you ever killed a human thinking it was a replicant? But that's not what she asks. Deckard could easily interpret her question as stated to mean, as a police officer, have you ever mistakenly killed the wrong person? Or, have you ever killed someone, having mistaken that person for your suspect? And Deckard might have replied exactly as he does. No. Implicit in Rachel's question, however, is, have you ever been so fooled into thinking that a replicant was human, that you killed a human thinking it was a replicant? Later, Tyrell tells Deckard that Rachel is beginning to suspect that she herself is a replicant. Naturally, then, she would be curious to ask a professional whose job it is to identify and retire replicants if it's possible to mistake a replicant for a human being. If Deckard had answered, yes, Rachel might have taken this to mean, yes, it's conceivable to mistake a replicant for a human, and thus it may follow that it's conceivable to be a replicant and mistake yourself for human. However Rachel means this question, it would surely elicit an emotional response from the subject. Rachel, therefore, may be administering her own version of the Voight-Kampff test to Deckard without him realizing it. In Rachel's Voight-Kampff test, Deckard asks her more than 100 questions but the only questions the movie lets us hear have to do with animals. 
Someone gives you a calfskin wallet. Your son shows you his butterfly killing jar. There's a wasp on your arm. And you see a banquet in a stage play featuring raw oysters and boiled dog. The one non-animal question has to do with Rachel happening upon a magazine picture of a nude woman and her husband wanting to put it on their bedroom wall. Rachel deflects. Is this testing whether I'm a replicant or a lesbian, Mr. Deckert? Deckert doesn't answer. Just answer the questions, please, he says, channeling Jack Webb. Strictly speaking, we don't know if the magazine photo question is indeed one of the questions in the Voight Kampf test, or whether Deckert has inserted it himself, either to take the subject off guard, or truly to gauge her sexual attitudes. Rachel answers, I wouldn't let him put the photo on the wall. I should be enough for him. We do not hear Rachel answering any of the Voight Kampf test questions by talking about her feelings. She states, matter-of-factly, one might even say robotically, that she wouldn't accept the calfskin wallet and would call the police, that she would take her son to the doctor, and she would kill the wasp. That flatness of affect alone may tip Deckard off that he is dealing with a replicant, or a sociopath, or perhaps the mere fact that someone would refer to people as humans have you ever retired a human by mistake, would awaken his honed Blade Runner instincts. Regardless, this is an ingeniously crafted scene in the film, with dialogue of subtlety, ambiguity, and wit. And of course, the $64,000 question is one that Rachel poses later, when she and Deckard are alone. You know that Voight Kampf test of yours? Did you ever take that test yourself? Deckard doesn't answer. Hmm. If you liked this video, please see my other videos on my YouTube channel and visit my website at timlemire.com. Thanks for watching.